Oh, I can turn on the thing on my phone. For a little bit. <laughs> 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 Oh shoot! All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, as is our way, if uh, if you are not happy with your last unit test, you're welcome to retake it up through one week from yesterday. Uh, our new unit is thermal chem. Oh shit! So, no, it's great. We're gonna dig it. It's really cool. Uh, so, thermal chemistry has to do with just like it sounds, heat in chemistry. Uh, so, specifically, it's about energy. And uh, when energy is the cause of change or the result of change, we're not going to make it all the way through E. Uh, D is differences in energy. E is equilibrium. We're not going to make it all the way through equilibrium, but we're going to get through partway. Before we begin, are there any questions? Notice I need to take a roll. Okay. No questions? In that case, I have a question for you. Heat and temperature. Same thing or not the same thing? Not, the same. Right. not the same thing. Not the same thing. Um, so let's let's develop that. You learned that temperature. You learned that temperature was what? What is temperature? It's a it's a measure for the measurement of how fast the molecules are moving. Excellent. Temperature is a measure of molecular motion. Very good. So temperature is a measure of molecular motion. So when you say something has a higher temperature, what you're really saying is that the particles are moving faster. faster. They have a greater average kinetic energy. So remember, the average kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. Now, let me uh, create an, idea, a, a, an analogy for you. If you had a glacier sitting in front of you, and you had a hot cup of coffee, you're like, you're up in the north, you're like way east, northeast Canada, you're sitting in a glacier, like that's a very pretty glacier, and you have a cup of coffee, um, which one has more temp higher temperature? The coffee has a higher temperature. The coffee. It's not a trick question. But which one contains more molecular energy? The ice glacier. Yeah, the glacier. Yeah, the glacier. Because the glacier's got a whole bunch of molecules. So it's important for us to recognize that heat is the total amount of energy in all the molecules. Also, heat is also how... The energy change that occurs, or the energy that goes into or out of a process during a change. So when we say things have heat, we're talking about the total internal energy of all the molecules. We're also talking about the energy change in a process. Now in this class, we focus primarily talking about heat as an energy, uh, as the energy that occurs during a process. Sometimes heat goes in, sometimes heat comes out, but that's the difference. That's heat, and like you said. Uh, temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy, molecular motion. Okay, so we learned that before. And again, we say one half mv squared, that is the energy of motion, kinetic energy. Okay. Now, you, two other principles you've learned about. What do we call it when energy leaves a system? Those are the E. X. O exothermic, right? So when it's, when energy leaves the system, we call it exothermic, and when energy goes into the system, we call it endothermic. And the trickiest part about this is realizing that you and I are not the system. You and I are the surroundings. So if there's a process going on and it feels to you to be cold, is that an exothermic process or an endothermic process? Or it's endothermic because it's bringing in It's energy. endothermic. So if it feels cold to you, if the process feels cold to you, that means energy is going into the system. It is an endothermic process because you and I are not the system. You and I are the surroundings. On the other hand, you're like, ooh, yeah, that feels warm. If a process feels warm, is that process an exothermic system or, or, or an ex endothermic system? Exothermic. It's exo. So you're like, ooh, it's giving off heat. It's giving off heat. It's giving off heat to the surroundings, which is you and I. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. If that concept makes sense, then answer this to me. Melting of ice cubes. When an ice cube melts to liquid water, is that an exothermic process or an endothermic process? Exothermic. 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 Yes, exothermic. Think about it before you answer Ice cube, solid ice going to liquid water. It's an endothermic. 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 It's
It's endothermic because he has to go into the system. So the reason it feels cold to us is heat is being removed from us and going into the system to melt the ice cube. Capish? Yeah. All right. Any questions so far? Now, I gotta have you do something. This is really profound at the back tables that Tatum and Hannah are at, and it works a little bit for you guys too. Put if you have two hands, raise your hands. I want to make sure everybody has two hands. This only works if you have two hands. Everybody has two hands. Okay. So I have three hands. That's not a hand. It's a little bit. So take one hand and put it on the top of your table. Take the other hand and put it on the frame, the wood frame of your table. Are they at the same temperature? No. Yes. No. 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 I'd say the table is colder than the wood. The surface. This little surface thing is cold. Never coming. The, the top of the table feels a lot colder than the bottom of the table. Yeah. The frame. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly does. Though, um, here's the problem. The tables and their frame have been in this room for weeks, and as the air temperature of the room goes up, everything in the room that's not a hot-blooded mammal stays that temperature. Okay? You and I can adjust our temperature and maintain a constant temperature. The table can't. So if the table gets to 23 degrees, or if the room gets to 23 degrees, the whole table gets to 23 degrees. Can we agree on that? Yeah. Yeah. So why is it? that the top of the table at 22 degrees feels colder than the frame of the table at 22 degrees. Yes, actually, um, exactly that. So your hands, body temperature is 37 Celsius, 98 Fahrenheit, but 37 Celsius. And if you take a 37 degree Celsius hand and put it on a 22 degree Celsius table, Heat is going to want to move from the warmer object to the colder object. That's just the zero with law of thermodynamics. It's just what it does. But heat wants to go from hand to table and hand to frame. But the reason the table top feels colder is the molecules are closer together. Remember, what is temperature? Uh, the measure of the the molecular motion, right? And if heat goes from a warmer thing to a colder thing, you're basically causing the colder thing's molecules to speed up. So the closer those molecules are, the easier it will be to move heat into them. That is called specific heat. Specific heat has to do with how well a material will move heat. The specific heat of the tabletop is much lower than the specific heat of the table frame. So the molecules are closer together, so they don't resist heat change very well. And they're closer together because it's what it's made of, right? Exactly, because it's a much, much more dense material. Same thing with metals. They're like, ooh, that's very cold. Because you're like, yeah, that's definitely colder than me. But is it, is it as colder as colder than the room? No. no. It's the same temperature of the room, but it's colder than me. So heat's going from my hand into the metal plumbing, and the reason it feels cold is the heat is transferring very rapidly because the molecules in the metal plumbing are very, very close together. Capish? Wood, on the other hand, is far less dense and molecules are far further away, so it's harder for them to transfer heat from molecule to molecule to molecule. Like this towel, it doesn't feel cold at all because it's not very dense. The molecules are really far apart. So I like to think of specific heat as thermal inertia. You learned about inertia in middle school? Yeah. And inertia basically says uh, an object at rest tends to stay, stay, at rest. stay at rest, and an object in motion tends to stay in, motion. stay in motion. That's inertia. That's movement inertia. I like to think of specific heat as thermal inertia. Objects that have very high specific heat have very high thermal inertia. They're not very dense. Their molecules are spread out. It takes a lot of, they, they transfer heat very slowly, and it takes a lot of heat to make them change temperature. On the other hand, the molecules that are close together, like metals and whatever this is made out of, the molecules are close together, they have low thermal inertia, it doesn't take very much heat to get them to change temperature, and they move heat very, very rapidly. So that's specific heat. Ugh, I, I'm sorry, it all came, but that's why I told you, it all came up at once, like, blam! 
every time we get a new version of anyway, what, what, so it's how a substance reacts to heat change. I like to think of it as thermal inertia. It is defined as the amount of energy required to raise one gram of a substance one degree. So specific heat actually has the unit of joule per gram degree. How many joules of energy? We talked about the joule before, right? Yeah. Joule is a standard unit of energy named after the guy Johnny, named James Christ about joule. Johnny yeah, knows about joule. We, yes, we know about joule. A different joule. J O U L E, not J U U L E. Yeah. Four hundred million dollars. Yeah. Uh, that we company's do. totally going out of business. Yeah, out. Uh, <laughs> bankruptcy. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. Um, you shouldn't be. <laughs> Vaping is bad. Yeah. Unless your doctor gives you a vape, then vape is fun. They call those nebulizers. You want to talk about this one? Wait, doctors give you vape? They're called nebulizers. It's a chemical that they put into a Are you talking? Wait, so are you talking about um, a breath? Or, what is it called? An inhaler? Or a little bit like this? A little bit. But not quite. They actually give out like a pause with chemicals. Okay, so going back to work. So it is defined as the amount of energy joules that takes that it takes to raise a gram of a substance one degree Celsius. That's specific heat. Um, and I, I guess it, as it shouldn't surprise me, but I just realized that um, last in second period that some people get heat and specific heat mixed up. So in your notes, make sure you're writing specific heat and not just heat because somebody said I wrote down heat is the amount of heat required like no specific the amount of heat required to raise one gram of a substance one degree and so and it makes sense that molecules that have a low specific heat require less energy to raise their temperature one degree and molecules that have a high specific heat require more energy to raise their material one degree Depending? A little bit. If you have any questions, raise, raise your hands. We're about to start. We're about to rub some math on it. Okay. I love the formula. The formula for specific heat is totally cool. So it should make sense that if you're going to raise the temperature of material, the more material you have, the more heat you're going to need. Okay. So mass should be in our formula. Oh, right. I forgot. This is important. We'll get to the formula here in a second. Metals have a low specific heat. It's pretty cool. The metal specific heat is almost all less than one. As far as I know, they're all less than one. So if you see a specific heat that's less than 1.0, it's most likely a metal or at least a very dense solid. Uh, Non-metals tend to have a specific heat larger than one. And there's one big one, and it's water. Water specific heat is 4.184. That's going to come up in a second. That's going to be the number you're going to have to remember a lot. Water specific heat is 4.184. I'll bring it up in a second. I know, it's 4.186 up there. And it's also 4184 if you're a physicist. So, chemistry books say 4.184 joules per gram degree. Physicists say 4.184 joules per kilogram degree because physicists only use standard units, and a kilogram is a standard unit. Surprise. Uh, and yeah, up here it says 4.186. You think they would just take an average and say 4.185, but they don't. I would just use 4.12 or 4.19. Just use 4.1. I guess that doesn't work either. Yeah, 4.1. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You're always going to be within, within the proper range. Let's use 4.184 in this class, though. Okay. That's huge. That's more than 10 times the specific heat of most of the metals. So that means if you had a gram of water and a gram of steel, it would take 10 times more energy to raise the temperature of water one degree. And you actually know this because when you make your spaghetti, you get your metal pot. Your metal pot weighs about a kilogram. And then you put a kilogram of water into the pot. It takes a long time to warm up that water, much longer than it takes to warm up the pot. Oh, okay, so the higher the little number is, the more, or, okay. So yeah. when, when you're boiling water, uh, is the pot getting to yeah. a yeah. certain, like, it's the pot 
more, I, I just, sorry, I completely spaced. Is the pot more than 100 degrees? Not by, not by much. Right. Yeah, because it's constantly transferring heat into the water. So if the, if the pot is a really, really good transfer of heat, it won't be as hot as like the burner is. Okay, but the pot is going to be hotter than the water, the water and the pot. It'll be a little bit cooler than the water, but not that much. Oh, oh, so even though the pot uh, warms up quicker than the water, it has a chance from the pot to the water, right? Yes. The pot warms up a lot faster because it requires less energy to change temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's do some math. So if we're going to increase the temperature of matter, the mass plays a role. The more matter you have, the more temperature you're going to ignore heat you're going to need. The variable we're going to use for heat, to heat into a process or out of a process, is Q. So we're going to use Q for the amount of heat that we need to go into or out of a process. So Q is equal to the mass of the stuff we want to raise the temperature of, its specific heat, the larger the specific heat, the more heat we're going to need, and then multiplied by how much of a temperature change we're looking for. So the formula is Q equals MC delta T. MC delta T. Yeah, triangle means change in. So the amount of heat required is going to be equal to the mass of the thing we're trying to warm up multiplied by that thing's specific heat multiplied by the change in temperature we're looking for. The little p represents constant pressure. Um, we usually drop it because most of our, our labs are on Earth, where pressure is pretty close to 1. But if you climbed a mountain, or maybe you did some experiments in Colorado, or you open the window while you're flying down the uh, flying in the sky, your pressure is no longer one, things change. But down here, one pressure, one atmosphere is just fine. So that's our formula, MC delta T. If you want to heat something up or allow something to cool down, the heat going in we want, when we want to warm something up, or the heat coming out we want to let it cool down, is MC delta T. Mass, specific heat, change in temperature. Now let's talk about this. Um, my, I found this in, I'm going to do a little project. This is like the cutest little soda here. Only 140 calories per bottle. 12 ounce bottle. This is the same as a can. 12 ounce. Um, uh, but anyway, 140 calories. On this side of the Atlantic, we use calories with a big capital C. That means thousands of little C calories. So just in case it comes up, the standard unit of energy is the joule. A single calorie is 4.184 joules. And then what they have here is big C calories, which are actually called kilocalories. So when we say this is 140, all the sugar in here is 140 calories, what it means is it's 140,000 little calories. That's very dumb, the way that's named. Yes. Multiplied by 4.2, it's about 600,000 joules like or 600 kilojoules. Is that so if you go to Europe and, uh, or, or Asia and you buy yourself a Coke, hold on to the bottle if you can. Because in Europe and Asia, they don't they don't use calories. They actually use kilojoules. Yeah. So it'd be like it would say amount per serving, kilojoules, six hundred. Six hundred kilojoules. So so when you see things and you see calories, like ah oh, Gatorade, eighty calories. That's eighty thousand calories, which is about thirty three thousand joules. Yes. Just wait to what I'm going to do. I'm going to fill these up with sugar, the amount of sugar. This one has 39 grams of sugar. I'm going to, I'm going to fill it up with granulated sugar. And it's going to come up to like right here. Oh, I, know. Huh? I know, right? It was the best. It was the coolest lab. I thought I told you this class like weeks ago. It was the coolest lab. It used to be the very first lab we would do where 
you would bring in various things and then you'd measure out how much sugar you eat by drinking them. And people are like, I'm drinking all that sugar. Just to practice using the balances. Then the ants came. Maybe I'll bring it back next year. Bring the ants back. <laughs> Why not? Yeah, you will be gone. That's cool. Okay. So if you're feeling comfortable with this, give me a thumbs up. Because we need to do some practice here in a second. Before we do some practice, let's talk about why we use this. This is called a coffee cup calorimeter. And we have them in the back. We're going to be using them uh, next week. We have a simulation tomorrow. Then we're going to use the coffee cup calorimeter. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a block of hot metal. Top shelf, the little white yeah. cups. Yeah. We're going to take a block of hot metal, and we're going to put them in the cold water. And what's going to happen is the hot metal is going to cool down, and the cold water is going to warm up until they get to thermal equilibrium. Thermal equilibrium is what you have with your clothes right now for the same temperature. Hang in there, Dimitri. <laughs> so when you reach thermal equilibrium, they're at the same temperature. So the hot metal is going to cool down to the same temperature as the cold water warms up to. And we're going to say, all right, so the sample, the hot metal, got colder and lost heat. But that heat went into the water and the water warmed up. So the change in heat of the metal equals the change in heat of the water. And the sample, the MC delta T of the sample, equals the MC delta T of the water. Make sense? It's really hard to like figure out how much heat comes out of something unless you transfer it to something that you can measure. And that's what we do. We do a process and we transfer the heat to the water and then the, we measure the temperature change in the water and we work backwards. That is called calorimetry. And it's what we're gonna be doing all next week. Is that cool. actually how they find the amount of calories in something or no? Yes, but they use a bomb calorimeter, which used to have an image right here. Um, a bomb calorimeter is a big metal box about the size of a washing machine. And if you get if you go to a, a cool school, you'll, you'll get to play with one. I got to play with one at Oregon State. And you put your sample in this, it's like a big, well, it's a big can, basically. It's a big stainless steel can, and it's got some water in it. And you put your sample in the middle of the can, and then there's a little electrode that goes into it, and you seal it all up. And then they pressurize it, they give it plenty of oxygen. You turn on the oxygen, and it fills it up with oxygen. And then there's a little sight glass you look at. And you press a button, and it goes poof. And all the heat of the poof goes into the water, and you measure the temperature change of the water. It's literally called a bomb calorimeter because you blow up whatever you put in there. You can, like, put a piece of Snickers in there and go boom, like, ooh. You can put some Frappuccino in there. Or, oh, sorry. It disappears or... It disappears. Yeah, it vapor. It, it burns up. It vaporizes. Oh, really? Yeah. You don't. You don't actually hear it because it's like this big metal box. You're not like putting a block of C4 in there. It would blow the lab apart. But you put, um, you put like basically you put your sample in this little dish, and the electrodes basically uh, fry it, electrify it, but not enough to affect the the um, how much heat it releases. Then all the heat that's released in the explosion, you measure in the water. Yeah. And then you go do math, and then you go bowling, and then you eat pizza. So that pretty much sums up chemistry of life is at the college level. Yeah. Uh, so it just, it like, it doesn't destroy the energy, though, because energy can be. Right. The energy goes into the thing we want to measure. So a bottom calorimeter is just a really big coffee cup calorimeter. We're doing the exact same thing. The MC delta T of the sample becomes the MC delta T of the water. All right. Are you ready to do math? Notes? Okay, let's do some math. Determine the specific heat if 34 grams of an unknown material, if 485 joules of heat are absorbed and change the temperature by 20 degrees. So put in your MC delta T, and now you are solving for C. Solve for C with MC delta T. Does the delta have a specific number or just ignore it? No, delta just means change in. It's how much okay. it changes. Okay. Yeah, the delta is not a variable, it's a function. Just so, you, so you, can you write MC delta T on Q equals MC delta T. 
your uh, your so enter mass, C? your C is your temperature. C is the absolute. Heat. No, T is temperature. Yep. T is temperature. Okay. So. C is your specific heat. Oh, so C is your temperature yeah. change. M is your mass, oh, yeah, and Q yeah. is your heat. Parentheses. Nah. What's Q? Heat. heat. The heat energy. In this case, heat is the 485 joules. Multiply all these things together. Uh, so it's just three, two, nine, eight, zero, zero. I don't know what that means. Three thousand or three hundred twenty-nine thousand eight hundred. No, I didn't think so. No, specific so heats are usually around one. They're usually like right above or right below. Seven, one, three, two. How the hell? You're solving. So if you'd like me to math math it for you, uh, the Q divided by the M delta T would be the same. Does that help us? You're solving for the specific heat, yes. So do I multiply M and T before the you. It depends on, on your particular style of mathematics. What is Q? Q is heat. Yeah. Heat has specific heat change in temperature. So 45 is Q. There is no 45. Four, by 485 is Q. Where are you getting 45? You're 85. You're the one who's getting 45 right now. 485. Same thing. You don't have to use Wait, so. So if you times 20, I think I have 285. 0.7. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And again, specific heats are always pretty close to one. Yeah, it's 0.7. You can't, it's 4. Yeah, you have to. That's 680. That's 680. But um, for this, when we're writing our answers, do you want us to go to the uh, hundredth place? Uh, thousands if you can. Okay, so three digits, right? Yep. 24.0. We're solving for C, and T is 20 degrees. And this gives you a C of 0. How much? 713. 713 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, so uh, is this material? Most likely a metal or most likely a non-metal? Metal, metal, metal. It's most likely a metal. Okay, it's less than one. Uh, I think that's a heat of aluminum, so that's most likely a metal. Now, there's one more thing we need to talk about before we do the next exercise. This change in temperature, it can be degree C or it can be Kelvin. Okay. Let me show you why. Water boils at what temperature Celsius? 100 degrees Celsius. 100 degrees Celsius. And water freezes at what temperature? Zero degrees Celsius. Zero degrees Celsius. So that means water also freezes at 273 Kelvin and 373 Kelvin. So the difference either way is exactly the same difference. 100 degrees Celsius is also the same difference of 100 Kelvin. So it doesn't matter if it gives you Kelvin or Celsius, you still put them in the same way? Correct. Got it. Okay, so here we go. With that information, here's this. If 950 joules of heat are added to 5.44 milliliters of water at 280 Kelvin, what will be the resulting temperature of the water? Nope. We take advantage of the fact that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So if you have 5.44 milliliters, you have 5.44 grams. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. I, I just kind of overheard that uh, milliliters is equivalent to grams, right? Yes. Okay. The density of water is one gram per milliliter. And our go. No, oh, no, wait, restart it for a moment. I hold it down. Oh, no, that's that's not ever. 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 It was an OMG of happiness. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> nice. 
Did you remember that the specific heat of water is 4.184? Yes. Yes. And did you remember that it asked for the resulting temperature? Yeah, but I don't know how to do that. Oh. Well, if you start with 280. Wait, wait, wait. Say that again. So, what's 4.184? The specific heat of water. And that is a number that you should commit to memory. Yeah. What do you do with the 4.184? <coughs> that is a C for the water. Oh, okay. Boom, got it. 4.81? 4.84. 4.184. Fuck. What are you doing? Wait, Hannah, Hannah, what's your answer? Sometimes science does require a little bit of profanity. Wait, what did you get? I just need, or I didn't do the constant. I don't think this is correct. Jeez. You're lucky. You yeah, no, our answer is correct. 0. 0. 0.15? You guys have to authorize your program every time you get something? Yeah, no. 5.4 yeah, no. plus. 4.184 is the, uh, the specific heat, which is C. We'll do an equation. So mass and then C is that. Yeah. Yes, and then the temperature is 280. It's 5.528. Oh my god. And then the 950 is. Yeah. Why do you mean you see? Wait, no, I think. I think. I don't know what we're talking Because, no, look, you put the energy, like the tools over No, the results are kept. Which is the tool. That's the delta. No, the delta is the resulting heat. That's 41. the change in temperature. Yeah. Minus Therefore, that's not what we're solving for, though. What are you trying to say? Oh my God. Are you trying I to multiply the 280? Yeah, I, I did the 280 times. Oh, see, no, you're not. Yeah. Because you're trying to find the resulting temperature. So you have to find what T is first. So specific. Oh, maybe it's the other way around. Right. 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 Temperature. I guess so. Yeah, and then we did 280 minus that. Because it says the result. Oh, okay. Cool, I don't know what you just said, but I don't know what she said. It was very different. I tried. Wait, you divided it or six thousand two hundred seventy-nine. Yeah. All right. Do you guys need more time, or are you ready to move forward? One second. One second. One second. One second. Okay. You may have a second. Uh, thank you. Mine's definitely wrong. How much you get? Six thousand. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think that's close. You started at two hundred eighty Kelvin, and you ended up at six thousand. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, the other answer I have is 0 0.149. That's also, That's also not right, dude. Yeah, let me go with you. So it's 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 yeah. You don't have been told. Yeah. But they got worse on the test. So. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But this is a whole new unit. You're only as good as your last performance. Calvin doesn't know what it is. Look at you, Calvin. Calvin doesn't know what it is. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let me give a good guess. Okay. Give it a good guess. Um. a copy. Can we have like seven moments? Okay. So what's the point seven? Six point seven. We've got 950 joules of heat, and we are warming up 5.44 grams of material. Water has a specific heat of 4.184, and now we're solving for how much temperature change we have, because everything else is there. So we're going to figure out how much delta T is. So 950 divided by 5.44 times 4.184, that gives us a delta T of... 41.7. 41.7 degrees. 41.7 Kelvin. 
So that's the change in temperature. Oh. The okay. temperature final is equal to the temperature initial plus the change in temperature. So that's 280 plus 41.7. How do you feel about 322 Kelvin? What? What? How do you feel about 322? Why do you add it? Why do you add it? The Why result is you're temperature. warming it up. You are starting at 280 oh, oh, and you're warming the water up. Okay. I knew so that's that's our track. We just, we just are, track you, are you ever are you, gonna, are you ever gonna have heat reduced? Absolutely. Okay, so heat reduced you subtract. Right? Yes. No, if it cools down, if it gives off heat, and you would subtract it. Oh. So the temperature that the water is currently at has nothing to do with the equation. Correct. Well, you just have to figure out how it changes because the de delta T that's M C. Delta T. If the delta T is the change in temperature. Right? Okay, you guys ready for one just like the lab we're doing tomorrow and next week? 145 gram piece of copper at 100 degrees is dropped into 80.5 grams of water at 21 degrees. The final temperature of the water and the metal is 32.5 degrees. What is the specific heat? For this copper. There is. So remember, this is what I told you before. The hot metal goes into the cold water. The Q the metal loses is equal to the Q the water gains. So the MC delta T that the metal loses is equal to the MC delta T that the water gains. So work on that one for a little bit. So 80.5 is the same for Nope. 80.5 is the mass of the, the water. C, C, CP is the abbreviation. Like, what's CP? It's supposed to be. Sorry. Yeah. Q is the final temperature. Technically, it is CP because it is specific heat at one atmosphere. Specific heat pressure. Sometimes I want to be correct. I'm definitely going back. I know, right? That's what I'm saying. I know, that's why I'm recording, because he's not here. Neither are I. Let me try my Okay, uh. I'm so lost. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Okay, you're going to set, so to, to, to diagram it, the Q of the metal is equal to the Q of the water. So the MC delta T of the metal is equal to the MC delta T of the water. And here's the thing, guys. The metal and the water both end up at 32.5. So the metal goes from 100 to 32.5, and the water goes from 21 to 32.5. Work this one out for a little bit. I can't see the guy. Puff the duty. No. Because look, you're missing this. Kind of this one's going to be. Yes, this one, this whole thing is one bottle. And this is basically four bottle. No, that is this one. That's the one. That's what I thought you were trying to find. Yes, well, identify what variables you have and identify what variables, what variables you were looking to solve. I have it down right now. And then write, oh, a, oh, oh, write oh, on a piece of paper in front of you. Got it, got it. I don't know. Yeah. 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 I was strumming my axe, yo. What? Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> My axe. No. Oh, they say ass. <laughs> <laughs>
That's on brand. Yeah. That is pretty on brand. Wait, For 70, so it, no. once you get 60, your answer, you can get a decimal. Uh, your number should come out. Okay. Is that ready? I'm assuming 400 of the decimal number. I got the same number as you, so that's decimal. Once again, 100 on the bottom, what's the 145? Once again, titles have a specific key that is less than one. You should get a number that is less than one. Oh, so I did one right, but I did the same thing. No, that's so I'm, I'm multiplying. What I'm doing is I'm multiplying the grams and the cells. You are solving for the C of the metal. Okay, the, 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 the Wait, where is C? Oh, we're talking about that. Whoa. Remember, the C of the water is 4.184. So temperature in grams. So do I multiply the 100 degrees Celsius or 32.5? Um, the 32.5, this is our Q, no, 32.5 is the final temperature of both the metal and the water. The water starts at, or the metal starts at 100, comes down to 32.5. Right? The water starts at 21, comes up to 32.5. Those two values are your change in temperature of the water, or change in temperature of the metal, and change in temperature of the water. Yeah. That's up there. And then I multiply those. You solve. So you. What did you say was the difference from water and the oh, metal? So, and the and so both of these are going to have the same Q value. Oh, so you have to solve for water. 8.5 times 2. I should get 2.4. I should get 2.4. Okay. Because those are the three factors. Okay. Divide that one by 1.5 times 100. So the whole thing is about it. The 32.5, oh, you don't have to worry about it. What's the name buggy today? Yeah, they forgot to give us actual sandwiches. They gave us a big Yeah, cool. I know. I heard it was a 10% day again. I know. Back to 10%. Some people like it. For some people, it's just a treat. I know Hans was probably destroying them. Yeah, he was like cramming them down. Like, forget the crickets, give me some ants. Give me some cockroaches. Oh. He did use to eat them back. I only say that because Hans used to bring in like second grade. Yes, he did. That's the only reason I say that. That was not a fat joke. Cool. Y'all remember that girl in my like middle school who left like, the dragon? Really? Yes. Oh what movie God. was it that I saw? She, she peed on my backpack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the lunchroom, Kaylee Donahue. She tried to pee on my Not in my. Oh. Not in the lunchroom. It was after school. Because she I walked up to Mateo and goes, "I'm gonna pee on your stuff." And Mateo goes. Calvin's stuff's right there. <laughs> <laughs> he thought she was. She Wait. Because she was like. Hey, special. So Actually, smaller than she was. She was just mad. Yeah, weird. no. That's, that's a bad thing. I mean, she squatted down, peed on my backpack. Oh, no, she peed on my backpack. And then he wore her for the rest of the day. Yeah, no, she, she ran like around. Like a trophy. Yeah. She she'd run around on the ball. Do you have an answer? Yes. Okay. So, once again. For those who are still struggling, you are ultimately in the exercise looking for the specific heat of copper, which is that variable right there. The mass of the copper is 145 grams. You are solving for C. The temperature change is going to be the 100 that metal starts at minus the 32.5 that the metal gets to. All right, and you're going to set that equal to the mass of the water, which is 80.5 grams. The specific heat of water, of course, is 4.184, and the temperature change of the water is the 32.5 the water ended at minus the 21.0, 21.0 that the water started. Doing all that, you can solve for the specific heat, and once again, it is a metal, it should be less than one. There's no 11.5, what do you uh, doing now? Uh, the difference between 32.5 and Okay, okay, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That's all, all well, correct, I just don't know what I'm doing. Well, I do have parts, answers put it on, on paper, sides. put each step on paper, okay. don't try to do it all on your guide like This step, this step, this step, then, then put it in your guide Wait, and the first half of the equation gets divided by the second oh, half. Yeah, I'm wrong. Yes. Oh, wrong. 
I was wrong. What did you do wrong? Just I didn't subtract. The that's what I thought. That's the only part. That I thought. Yeah. So the oh, water size three eight seven. Three, I didn't use thirteen but I thought it was necessary. Oh shoot. And that's equal. Oh, that's makes sense. Okay. I work as a bracelet. I work for a wedding. Is it, 0.26? So I, and then I got it is not. <laughs> that is less than one, so you're definitely in the ballpark. But it's a little bit bigger than that. But not by much. It's really you're really close. Okay, Dimitri. Oh wait, do decimals matter? Do decimals matter? No, like I meant what's after the We have an eight-way tie. Right. All the runners read in 14 5. seconds. 2.5? It's below one. Nope, it is below one because it's a metal. Are you looking for an answer? The water Not is 3,800. Oh, yeah. The water size is 3,800. So, we'll see if you can earn some chocolate. I'm so lost. I don't know. The water size is 3,800. I literally did it. Oh, no, Jeremy. Jeremy, do you have an answer for us? We do not. Okay. Oh, never mind. Hold so, on. doing all the mathy things, this is going to be 8.5 times 4.184 times uh, 11 and a half. What? 11.5 here? Yeah. Okay. 11.5 divided by, Alexa, stop. 145 times 67.5? Yeah. Times 67.5. You should get a number. Hold on, zero. Don't say it, don't say it. Okay. I'm about to say Okay, but that's what so I did. I lost three. 32.5. I think you just played it wrong. On the, on the bottom. You might have pressed the button. You need to put the policies on that. I don't know what I did. Okay. The I top do. is 3873. And the bottom is 1.1675. Wait, what the fuck? Because I literally did everything. 8.5. Times 4.184 times 11.5. 3873? Yeah. Divided by parentheses 145 times 67.5. Are you remembering to put the, the denominator in parentheses? Yeah, I get that. And what do you get? I got 0.267. Let me see. I don't know how that's possible. Is it 0.7552? No. Let me see. What the? This arrives. What? What? No, no, no. Wait, I but I did. I, I did one point five four point one eight four times one hundred minus thirty seven point five times one hundred minus thirty seven point five. Sometimes I got one nine seven eight seven point five. Point three nine seven. What? Point three nine eight. Just under point four. Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't. I don't Okay, so we'll practice this some more. But it looks like you guys are, you guys, you guys, like you have the concepts, it's just the algebra and the button pressing are eluding you. 3900 divided by 9700, roughly. Roughly. And then I get 2.5. I don't know, take a look at the calculator I gave to Yeah, I'm sure that's a good one. 